So for the gathered flounce, again, you have two pieces. You have A and you have B. So gathered flounce is a hem finish, which is gathered where there is a seam from the hem finish to the top or the skirt or the dress or whatever it is you're making. Now I've placed my pattern pieces, of course, so the grain line is parallel to the selvage or perpendicular. So perpendicular means a right angle. And the other thing I've done is I've placed it to try and make use of the fabric I have here so there's not too much wastage. Now I'm just going to cut this out and then we'll move on. Okay, so I've cut out my pattern pieces. And as you can see, with the gathered flounce, the panels which are created from the pattern piece developed from this part here are divided into, this one's divided into four, and then they're slashed all the way through and spread an even amount. So this is, has been spread roughly the width of each panel. If you want a gathered flounce that is more flared, you would slash and spread these so they go out on an angle and curve up. This one, I don't want a curved line, but one thing I have done which is different is I've done the line slightly angular. So this is more of a shaped gathered flounce rather than just a straight one. So before I did my slash and spread, where I had drawn my lines for my panels, I made sure they corresponded with notches on piece A. And then when I did my slash and spread, I transferred those notches to the middle of the spread. So when this is gathered, those notches will all line up. So now we can, we're going to start with our hem finish on this. Before we do our hem finish, we have to make sure we snip into our notches as well. So just snip the length of the T with the tip of the scissors. If you cut too far, you can cause a hole in the seam. Because this dark section here on the photocopy is our seam allowance. If we cut too far through that and create the seam along here, we would have a hole in this section. I don't think I mentioned, but these pieces are cut one, cut one, cut one. So that's just one single layer of fabric. Now for our hem finish, because this is just a straight hem, it's going to work out which way. I know where the notches are, is where the seam will be. So this part here is the hem. So we're just going to overlock and turn up the hem one centimetre for our hem finish. Now if you had a right and wrong side, which we don't with calico, you would overlock with the right side facing up. That way, the overlocking stitch, the right side of the stitch would be facing up and outwards once your garment's finished. So I've overlocked my hem. Now this is the right side of the overlocking stitch. That loopy side is the wrong side. So that is the side that gets turned up and folded. Now our seam and hem allowance is one centimeter. So I'm gonna use a seam gauge ruler to check that fold. Now that's one centimeter, perfect. I just have to keep that the same. So I can fold that up, give it a finger press. And when I stitch this, I wanna stitch it close to the edge of the overlocking. little reverse, stop, fold and finger press and you can recheck your measurement, one centimetre, excellent, keep going, nice and close to the edge of the overlocking. Finish. I'm just going to double check that my fold is still at one centimetre. Yep. Okay, 
so that's my hem finished nice and close to the edge of the overlocking and that's what it looks like on the right side so now what we need to do is our gathering stitch which is going to go along the top here and we're going to use a gathering stitch which is straight stitch still but it's at the longest stitch length which is four now for our gathering stitch we need to make sure we have long tails and we're not going to reverse and we're going to do two stitch lines one close to the edge one further away basically so that when we do our one centimeter seam they should sit in between the two gathering stitch lines so the first one I'm going to do I'm going to line my foot up with the edge of my fabric but I'm going to line the edge with kind of like the middle of this metal part here so not quite a foot width just kind of in the middle and then you just stitch straight stitch from one end to the next no reverse stitch leaving nice long tails like that and then we're going to do another gathering stitch and we're going to use the 1.5 line so again no reverse stitch long tails 1.5 away from the edge oops went off a little bit there and got to the end again nice long tails now to start gathering the goal is to have your oh, that's going to go that way ends match up and your notches match up as well so to gather you grab the top two threads Separate those. And you pull your fabric along those two gathering stitches. So you want to gather so that this is going to fit in with this length. So this will become that long. Now to lock in your gathering stitch, what you can do is put a pin at the end and then you get all four threads and you wrap them around the pin in a figure of eight. Then I can start gathering from the other end. So I'll do the same. I grab the top two threads. And I pull the fabric along. So I'm going to do it with my top piece in front so I can kind of get an idea as if it's getting to the right length with my gathering so I can see that looks pretty good but what I need to do is I need to make sure my before I lock in this edge this end sorry I need to make sure my notches are gonna line up so I'm just gonna loosen those gathers because I've got a notch here and I've also got a notch there so let's have a look they look like they're gonna line up so I need to evenly distribute those gathers as well a little bit so my next notch my middle one here and here they line up and then I've got one more here where's that one and there that looks pretty good to me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in 
my gathering threads. By grabbing them all and twisting them around my pin in a figure eight. Oops, let's get caught up. Am I overlocking? Now I'm ready to attach this to that. Now, right side, it's got to be facing inwards. I've got to be careful here that I don't stitch over the pin, but I'm going to line up my raw edges. Because you've got a diagonal finish here, you will have a little triangle that overhangs. And I'm doing a centimetre, but before we start sewing, you got to make sure you go back to straight stitch, which is two and a half, not four. Okay, so I'm going to line up my raw edges with my one centimeter. And what you should be doing is you should be stitching in the middle or roughly in the middle of those two gathering lines. I'll just move that a bit closer. I'm just going to use the hand wheel to go over the pin. And then I can line up the bottom. To the end of the seam and hold my gathering layer in place lining up my edges and stitch my one centimeter seam if you were doing a really really big piece that you're gathering you would pin your notches together to make sure that they were evenly placed like your gathers in between each notch we're even if you don't pin it you might have one area which is heavily gathered in comparison all right so we're coming to the end just going to use my hand wheel to go over the pin I'm actually just going to take that pin out so i can do a reverse stitch as well okay so i've attached the two together And I can take out my pin that was holding my gathering stitch in place. And then what you need to do now is you need to unpick or pull out this bottom stitch line and clip away these parts. These parts aren't too bad because they will be in the seam allowance once a seam is created here. If you do have a little bit left over like you couldn't get it all out it's not really going to matter because it would be included in the seam here so we're going to just get rid of that bottom gathering stitch and I'll do that now and then come back okay so I've unpicked that gathering stitch and got rid of most of this stuff here and you can see my gathers look pretty even because I matched up my notches before I sewed it now the last step is to overlock so we're going to overlock this edge with the gathered flounce on top and then we're going to iron our seam allowance upwards so I'll do that now okay so I've overlocked that seam now I can iron that seam so it goes upwards so like usual I use my iron as an anchor and I'm going to pull this and iron upwards So the reason why we pull this one is to get that seam nice and open and flat. And then to finish I'm going to iron from the other side, pulling my flounce downwards and ironing my gathers in place. So that is my gathered flounce, now it's shaped, 
So it's an asymmetrical flounce. Now, depending on the fabric choice, you could get a really nice drapey finish with this. Our calico that we use is quite, it's a medium weight really. So we don't have the drapey finish with all those little gathers. But a real nice lightweight rayon would have a really good effect with this type of technique. 